Welcome to Specific Love. For this project, I built this awesome Bluetooth speaker setup using some cedar fence posts and some old car audio speakers. Let's begin. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using cedar. In particular, cedar fence posts. You can get them relatively cheap, and as you see here, you can get them in a variety of colors. So I'm gonna use the dark color for the outer edge and this light color for the inside. So, let's do this. Now to get the full width of the wood I need for this project, I need to glue two of these together right here at an edge. But as you can see right along here, there's just a little bit too much of a gap. So we're gonna have to put these over my joiner and make them nice and flat. Now that is a much tighter seam. Now this lighter wood is going to go on the front and the back, so I'm not going to need as much wood, but I still need to join two of them together, so I'm going to cut these at about an 18 inch piece and glue two of them side by side. Just remember, if you're trying to glue up some of your small pieces, the top surface of your table saw should be nice and flat. Just make sure to lay down some plastic first. Now while that wood is drying, I figured I'd show you what I'm gonna be using. I got a couple old speakers here. They're just five inch speakers, and they only run up to a peak power of 50 watts, which is perfect for my setup. Now to power everything, I'm gonna be using this simple little amplifier board. The great thing about this one is I don't have to do any soldering, because I'll be honest, I'm not good at it. Over here it has the speaker wire and some screw down connectors. It has a nice little adapter so you can plug in a 2.1 AC adapter to power everything up. It has a nice little heat sink right here to pull away some of that heat. A Bluetooth chip and everything I need to connect Bluetooth wise. And also some buttons here in case I want to control volume or play or previous, which I don't think I'm going to be using that in this setup, but overall it might at least let me get it set up initially. Now for the on off switch, I'm going to use this simple little switch setup. It has three little prongs to wire up and on top actually has an LED built into the top of the switch, so that should make it easy to know if it's on and off. Now that the glue's had some time to dry, I need to finish off these boards. First off, I need to smooth them down, so I'm gonna put them through my planer and hopefully knock off some of these rough edges, and then we'll take a sander over the rest of it, and then we'll start the cutting. And to reduce some of the snipe that the planer did, I'm just going to use an orbital sander to knock it down. Now that I have them both nice and smooth, I'm going to take the good sides of both of them and I'm going to tape them together into one solid piece. And that way when I go to cut this, I know that the front and the back sections are going to be identical. Now I found the center of the boards and I marked out three and a half inches each way because I need the height to be about seven inches. So I need to cut both of these off. But first, I reinforce the center of it with some additional tape. Now that I have the excess cut off of this, I'm actually gonna be using one of these for the feet. So I'm gonna take this tape off and then we're gonna glue this all together. I now need to cut the angles off the side, so I came in two inches on the top. I'm gonna draw a straight line across. 
After lining all this up in the miter saw, it turned into about a 16 degree cut. All right, let's take these apart and see what we got. Oh yeah, I just love that symmetry. Hey, check this out. I was about to throw these scrap cutoffs away into the garbage, but look at that symmetry. It's almost perfect, and it was purely accident. I was just about to start to drill some holes, and I realized, look at this crack. Oh man, it runs almost the full length of the wood. I guess I'm gonna have to put some wood glue in there, give it some time to dry. After I added the glue, I added a couple clamps. I made sure to use some sacrificial boards here because I'm trying not to mess up these edges. But overall, that should fix it after a good sanding. Now I'm going to run these long dark boards through the planer and hopefully we won't get any cracks in these. After I got this through the planer and it just looking really, really good, I realized I had to remove a bunch of material, and this is kind of thin, especially for what I want to use this for. My original plan was to make the box about eight inches deep. Well, I have a feeling everything is still gonna work out if I make it a little bit shorter. So, I'm gonna take this over to the table saw. We're gonna rip this right down the center, combine these two, and make it about five inches deep. Let's go do that. Now while that's drying, I'm going to be cutting out a hole for the speaker. This is supposed to be a 5 inch speaker, and this is a 4 inch hole saw. But if you look at it, it's almost an exact fit. The speaker is only slightly larger with this grill, and I have a feeling they considered this outer ring part of that 5 inches. Either way, that works out to my advantage. So we're going to cut it with the hole saw, do a little massaging, and fit it right in. Now that we've given this some time to dry, I'm gonna put it back on the table saw. We just wanna cut off all the edges, making sure everything is nice and uniform. Now to cut the outer edge of this box from this big piece of cedar, I'm gonna to have to cut off some strange angles here. And to do that, I'm gonna be doing it on the table saw. So I hooked up just some scrap wood. Yes, I know it's a little overkill, but I already had it glued together. I knew it was straight, so I attached it to my miter gauge. We're gonna use a table saw to try and cut specific angles to get this wood to look right. But first, I'm gonna cut these a little bit oversized on the miter saw, so it'll be a lot easier to work with on a table saw. And if you do use a planer, always be careful with a snipe, you need to cut that off first. It's always good to try and pre-assemble this, just get an idea and make sure everything fits together before you fully glue it together. Always remember you can sand down some of the edges if they're a little bit rough right after you get everything glued up. So you don't have to worry about everything being 100% perfect, but that should work. Using a hole saw to cut these out made a real rough edge on both of these circles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my palm router and we're gonna go around each of these edges, hopefully to smooth them out so nobody can get a splinter and so it's not rough against the speaker. Now to install this on off switch, I'm gonna have to drill a hole 
right through this wood here. Now I'm gonna use a Forstner bit. This is seven eighths, and that should work perfect for this switch size. All right, now for a quick test fit. And perfect. Next step is trying to wire everything together. I am definitely not an electrician, so make sure you do a bunch of research before you connect your wires. Another little quick test with the speaker and it fits almost perfectly. Now these speakers are designed to screw in from the front side but I'm going to actually be screwing in from the back side so this might be a little bit tricky but it shouldn't be hard. One really nice thing about having a round speaker it really doesn't matter which way you mount it either way it's going to look good. I also just wanted to give the box a little bit of a test fit here. Everything seems like it's lining up well. Now we're going to try and glue just the outside edges here together so we can form the outer frame and then we'll work on the front and back. Now to glue all this together I'm going to use a combination of some wood glue and some super glue. I actually have the wood glue on here now I'm giving it a little bit of time to soak in because it's on ingrain. So if you're going to use ingrain like I'm doing here give it some time to soak in you can add a little extra. The extra I'm going to add I'm going to make sure when I put it on the box like so is going to be more toward the inside so if there's squeeze out you don't have to worry about it being seen and if there is just a little bit on the outside I can always sand it down. Now for the super glue I'm going to be adding just a little bit on the corners here just so that it'll have that initial grab and I don't have to wait so long for it to hold. Put everything in place, line up the boards and just hold it together for a few seconds. Now that the outside frame is secure, I want to be able to attach the back using some blocks. And the reason why is I want this to still have access to the internals of it, just in case it ever needs to be taken off. And to do that, I want to use some screws in the corners. But I need to make sure that these blocks are secured in place and that way I can screw directly into them and it'll be a nice secure fit. Now I've laid the frame around the back piece and I'm going to use again a combination of some wood glue and some super glue to hold each of these in place. Give it a few seconds and I should be able to lift it all off. Now in this case, I'm going to be drilling from the inside out. That's not usually a good idea if you want to keep the surface smooth, but because this is going to be a back panel back here, I'm not as concerned. I'm also going to have a couple pieces I'm going to be drilling into on the back side, so they'll be less likely to have tear out. Now that I have the holes drilled all the way through, I'm going to take a countersink and just make a little bit of a divot so the screws can sit flush. Now I do strongly suggest the first time you put the screw in to do it with a regular screwdriver so you can feel if there's any extra tension that needs to be adjusted with. And before I forget, I need to put one extra hole right here in the back so that I can have the plug wire go through. Now to attach these speakers, I'm going to be using some really short screws, but I do need to pre-drill each of the holes, and I made sure to mark these so there's very little chance that this will even come close to coming out the front, because we don't want to have any holes sticking out the front. The 
I hold the front end. I'm going to be using some extra pieces here that I've cut just big enough that I can fit in these areas on the sides and on the bottom down here since the button will be here. We're going to glue these with wood glue to the front and to the sides and the bottom and top so that everything will be nice and secure. But while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to put some CA glue in all the rest of the corners and that way it should hold it secure until everything is cured. Now that the face plate is nice and secure, we're gonna go over this with just some light grit sandpaper, make sure everything is smooth, smooth off some of the edges, and then we're gonna add a finish. And to give this a little bit more of an actual character look, I created a couple feet here that are gonna stick out just a little bit in front and a little bit in the back so that it will not only protect the front, but it'll keep the hole and the plug that's coming out the back protected as well. Also to give a little more stability. And to hold these in place, I use just a little bit of wood glue and some one and a half inch brads. Since cedar is a real soft wood, I'm going to use a couple coats of polyurethane to give it a little bit of a harder shell. I really love how the finish just makes all of it pop. Now that we've given it some time to dry, I'm going to flip this over and we can finally put the speakers in. Now we gotta get some of these wires through so we can have the button on the front. So let's just carefully put these through here. Now we'd like for the button, the LED on the button to be facing up. Get everything where we want it and push it in place. And to keep the button from coming loose, we're just going to add a little hot glue. Now to secure this amplifier, but also keep some of these adjustment tabs right here, so it's easy access and so I can fine tune it. We're going to put some hot glue on the bottom of these and glue it somewhere right in there. Now once the board is secured, you can just connect the wiring and all the wires going to your speakers. Then we want to feed through the power wire and then we can put on the back. Now before we secure the back, I want to plug this in and give this a try. Once I turn this on, it should make a couple of noises. The LED's working. There we go. Alright. Now that everything is secure inside, let's attach the back, which is a tight fit. It should slide in. Just like so. We'll add the screws and then we'll rock it out.
am super excited how this turned out. It is just a great way to learn some new things along with just building and having fun. Now I built this for my church for the nursery so that they can have some music and be able to hear the pastor while everything is going on and they're not just separated from the entire service. So I have a feeling this will be a great addition for them. Now if you enjoyed this project, make sure you click the like button and tell me what you think about it in the comments. I really do read every single comment and I'd like to know and it just helps me to, to guide in my direction of the channel and going for future videos. Also, if you'd like to support our channel, we recently signed up to Patreon. I'll have a link to that in the description, so make sure you check that out. Otherwise, have fun building.